And the efficacy of prayer, the, whether prayer uh, uh, can help people uh, heal. And suppose that uh, these independent experiments showed conclusively with all the you know, replicability and everything that is associated with good science, uh, that Catholic prayers, in fact, do heal the sick. Whereas the others didn't. Jewish, Hindu, Protestant, Muslim prayers had no effect. <laughs> now, people always say to me, oh, well, do you, if you saw something that was supernatural, you'd, you'd look for a natural explanation. Yes, you would look for a natural explanation. I agree. You would look first for a natural explanation. But what plausible natural explanation could you, could you believe, uh, could you think of, to explain this observation? This would be an observation that would be convincing. It would convince me. Now, I was raised as a Catholic. I'm already baptized, so there's no problem about me getting back to the church. I just have to walk down to the, the dearest Catholic church, go to, to the confessional, and say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been 50 years since my last confession. <laughs> uh, and I would be back back in the good graces. Because all the priest would have to say is, You're forgiven. Hey, heaven is, is, is assured. It could have happened. It hasn't happened, though, as you, as you know. But look, that would mean Catholics are proven right all along. Uh, it's supposed to be a bubble here, but uh, the colors are not too good. Uh, that uh, uh, you could go to a doctor and he would prescribe prayer aspirin and say, uh, say three our fathers and fall, fall four hill and the Marys would call me in the morning. Now, so let me tell you about this, what I call the scientific search for God, where we turn the telescopes and microscopes of, of modern science on the God issue. Here's how we do it. We hypothesize a God, and you notice I've underlined the G there. This is a God with a capital G. A God who plays such an important role in the universe and human life that his actions should be uh, scientifically observable. Uh, now that's to be contrasted with a God with a lowercase g, which is other gods, gods that don't care a whit about humanity, and so uh, uh, we might have difficulty detecting them. I'm talking about the God that most people worship, the cat, that uh, Christians, Jews, and, and, and Muslims certainly worship as a God that is really an important element of the universe, in fact, of everything that goes on in the universe. And I say, let's look at the data, and if the data are convincing the, uh, to uh, uh, a scientist, the scientist would have to accept it. He can't be dogmatic about it, except what the data have to say. And so let me mention some, I call this the God hypothesis. You hypothesize such a God. That God, uh, I don't know what the qualities of that God are. I don't know what it looks like, what his general nature is. I'm just talking about the, the effects of that God. If that God exists, that God should have influences and effects uh, that we observe in, in our, in, in, with our own two eyes as well as with our scientific instruments. Well, if such a God exists, we should see evidence that the laws of physics, for example, were violated in producing the universe, that some external force, in other words, was necessary to produce the universe. That, that contradicted the laws of physics. If there was no contradiction, then there would be no need for this external force. The universe, of, uh, we should see evidence that the universe and life were designed by uh, high intelligence. That's a common belief. That God communicates truths. Most, most the believers of most religions think that God uh, doesn't just deal with or the real world and the physical world, but actually uh, communicates with select individuals and tells them fundamental truths about, about the world. They, then we should be able to test that. We should be able to find that those truths are true. They couldn't have been in the person's head all along. Scriptural events. There's lots of issues that involve scriptural events that I'm talking about now, supernatural events, uh, described as scriptures that could have been tested uh, 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 Physically, uh, now, for example, just to give you a quick example, uh, there's 
to talk about the exodus not having happened because there's no evidence for the exodus, no, no, no evidence for any campsites and so on. So all these things can be tested, campsites and assignment is what I'm referring to. At least some prayer should be answered. Now you know, you don't expect God to answer everybody's prayers. But if there are billions of prayers being fed every day, surely some of them, if, that, if that's worthwhile doing praying, and I think every religion really thinks it's worthwhile, uh, then the, there should be something that gets answered, and that should be testable. You should be able to see evidence for that. Like in the prayer experiments that I mentioned. And incidentally, there have been very good prayer experiments done uh, by, uh, uh, by reputable groups, including Duke University, Harvard University, Mayo Clinic, for three, and, and these, none of them have come up with positive results. Uh, humans should have supernatural powers. If we have souls, we should have supernatural powers of some sort, like the ability to uh, move matter and uh, with our minds or read other minds, <laughs> stuff that the psychics claim we can do, but there's never been any evidence for. And finally, there should be evidence that God is a source of morals and values. This is a common thing that's taken for granted. Most people say, well, of course God is the source of Where else would it come from? Well, uh, you, you can examine that question. Look at the data. Does the data indicate that God is a source of morals and values? Look at how people behave. That's a science question. That's an observable thing that you can do in a empirical issue. Now, let me uh, just discuss a couple of these testable predictions. I can't, I'm not going to talk about all of them, uh, because I want to leave a lot of time for, for questions. It's always a more fun part of the show anyway than, uh, uh, than me talking here, so I'll try to get through this. The, let's look at the testable prediction that life was designed by a high intelligence. Now, we should be able to test that by looking at life, looking at life very carefully. Let's just take the example of a human body. Does the human body look like it was designed by a high intelligence? Well, it's an empirical fact that the eye is wired backwards. Uh, it has a limited spectrum. It's, written, it's, pr it's prone to detachment. In other words, it doesn't, it, while it does the job very well, it doesn't. It, it's, it's certainly not, not uh, looked like it was designed all that well. It, in fact, it looks like you expect it to look that it was cobbled together by the processes of evolution. Now, we breathe and eat through the same hole. Now, isn't that a stupid thing when you think about it? Thousands of people choke to death every, every year because of that. And here's my favorite. What competent engineer would put a waste disposal site in a recreation area? <laughs> So there, there's the evidence that, that life, uh, the human body is not designed by high intelligence. Now, let's, let's move on to what I really know about, which is, is physics and cosmology. And, uh, and that's the part of the book that's probably the most unique, because there are some new stuff in there. The other, the things that, some of the other things other people have said, and maybe they've even said it better, uh, but uh, I, I concluded for completeness. I think I've said some unique things in most of these other subjects, but here's where uh, I, I've said some things that uh, that other people, you would find other people have, have talked about. And uh, this, this prediction is that the law of physics, laws of physics were violated at the creation. If it was a creator, there has to be a need for a creator, presumably. If there wasn't any need for a creator, then clearly, uh, there's no evidence. Uh, if there's no evidence, then there's no need for one. There was one thought. These are a lot of these arguments. Just you know, the intelligent design argument that I just mentioned, or the design argument in general, whether it's intelligent or not, uh, is an old argument, and it was a very good argument. Before Darwin came along, it was an excellent argument for the existence of God because no one could see how complex life could be developed. Uh, but then Darwin showed how it could. And these, these arguments were good prior to the 20th century. It was once thought that the first law of thermodynamics was violated, or it's also called the conservation of energy law, it was violated at the creation because we've got matter, we've got energy in the universe that had to come from someplace, right? Well, it turns out from modern cosmological experiments 
and cosmology has become a very precise empirical science over the last 20 years.